What is polycystic ovary syndrome or PCOS? This is going to be a little bit of a deep dive into the biology behind some of the symptoms you might be experiencing, like chin hair or acne or an inability to lose weight or irregular periods. So what is it? Polycystic ovary syndrome? I think it's better to show you. I brought along my uterus model. So this model is about life size. And what you see is the uterus here, and you see the fallopian tubes and the ovaries. Now the ovaries are about the size of an almond. And every single month, these ovaries produce about six or seven eggs. And each of those eggs is contained in a small follicle or cyst. Now cyst is just the word we use for anything that's fluid filled. So every single month it's completely normal for each ovary to have about six or seven follicles developing in very, very small cysts. And when those follicles grow, the egg develops, it ovulates, and then the ovary produces progesterone. What happens with polycystic ovary syndrome is that the hormones are out of balance. And that means that women don't ovulate, so they don't produce progesterone. And that leaves behind many large cysts or polycysts. What else happens? Well, inside the uterus, all of that estrogen that's created by those growing eggs, it causes the lining of the uterus to build up with blood. But because there's no progesterone to balance it, there's also irregular periods. And when a woman with PCOS does have a period, it's typically very, very heavy, and it can last for seven, 10, or even 14 or 21 days. So when women have polycystic ovary syndrome, there's many other things they may notice. And that's because with polycystic ovary syndrome, there's two underlying causes, and they interact with one another. I'm just gonna put this down for a sec. There's an underlying insulin resistance. That's why it's really hard to lose weight. With the insulin resistance, blood sugar rises and that extra blood sugar gets converted to fat. It typically goes right around our middles. There's also an increased level of male type or androgenic hormones like testosterone and DHEAS or dihydroepiandrostenedione. These hormones plus the insulin resistance interact with one another. So as weight goes up, those hormone levels also go up, making the symptoms of PCOS even worse. What both of these do together is prevent regular, normal ovulation, regular periods, but they also have a lot of skin and hair manifestations. So those higher levels of male type hormones, it causes chin hair, it causes deep cystic acne that's really, really painful on the, on the face and often on the back or chest. It can also cause excessive body hair on your arms, on your chest, on your legs, even on your stomach. All those excessive hormones can also cause loss of hair on your head, especially around the temples. We call this male pattern baldness because it's associated with those male type hormones. In addition, the insulin resistance makes it super hard to lose weight. And so women who have PCOS find that if they have carbohydrates and they don't do enough weight bearing exercise, their weight can increase um, pretty dramatically. What can you do about all of these things? Well, there's a lot you can do. First of all, awareness is key. Knowledge is power. So understanding the underlying biology can really help because PCOS is not your fault. Despite what well-meaning friends or relatives may have said, this is not in your control, but you can control the symptoms. And the best way to do that is to get your hormones into balance. We use the birth control pill, or a vaginal ring. These are combination hormone treatments that help reduce those male type androgenic hormones. So by taking the birth control pill or using the vaginal ring, you can get your hormones back in balance and that can help reduce some of those symptoms that are really, really bothersome. 
The next thing you can do is follow a very low carbohydrate diet. Remember with PCOS, there's an insulin resistance. So your body doesn't metabolize carbohydrates in the same way. That's why you can go out to dinner with friends and they can eat whatever they want and not gain an ounce. And you're having a salad and you can't lose weight. Weight bearing exercise is the key. So the more you use your muscles, the more you're bringing glucose out of your blood system and into your cells so they can be used. So yoga is a great way to do it. Weightlifting is a good way. Anything that, res um, that uses resistance, that really helps reduce your body weight. Many women also find that they need a medication like metformin, which is an insulin sensitizer, which helps reduce some of the issues that happen with the insulin resistance in PCOS. And many of my patients have also started using the new injectable medications that help with weight loss. It's important that you find a healthcare provider who knows how to treat this very complex hormonal condition so you can find the answers that are right for you. What else can you do? If you're concerned about your periods, I want you to know that women with PCOS are at higher risk of developing uterine cancer, and that's because they don't have a balance of hormones. They're not having that progesterone released with ovulation, and so having too much estrogen stimulating the lining of that uterus can cause an increased risk of uterine cancer later on. And that's another reason many women decide to use either a hormonal IUD like Mirena or Liletta or the combined birth control pill to reduce the risk of them developing endometrial or uterine lining cancer. The other thing that most of my patients are concerned about is fertility and that's understandable because if periods are irregular then Understandably, you may not be ovulating regularly. What can you do to increase your chances of fertility? First of all, losing weight is the key. And many of my patients have found that by just dropping 10 or 20 pounds helps them start having regular cycles, regular periods. Others have found that by using metformin, the insulin sensitizer, helps them lose weight a little bit faster. And you can talk to your healthcare provider about using a medication called letrozole. Letrozole is a medication we use for breast cancer patients. That seems kind of weird, right? But letrozole is used as an aromatase inhibitor. So stay with me here. In our fat, our fat aromatizes estrogen. And so when we use an aromatase inhibitor, it helps improve the chances of ovulation and healthy pregnancies. So do talk to a healthcare provider who's very familiar with treating PCOS for any of your concerns. And if you like what you've heard today, please click on subscribe, leave me a comment and leave me questions because I'm happy to talk to you about any aspect of PCOS that you may be concerned about. Take care and be well.